On our hotline right now is the one and only Mike Irwin from Pig Trail Nation. Get to talk with him each Monday, although we have changed the time that we are usually talking with Mike because now in football season, Sam Pittman has 12 o'clock pressers, so 115 seems to fit pretty well. Good afternoon, Mike. How are you doing today? Doing really good. How are you guys? Good, good. We're just trying to kick around the idea of um, something that I just read from the press conference. I, was, I didn't see anything else that Sam Pittman talked about, but he admitted the team did not give great effort against UAB. You could see that in the first quarter. This isn't the kind of thing that you, I don't think this team can get away with that any longer. Well, I saw it more on the defensive side. It was really both maybe for a while with the offense, but I think that had more to do with Taylor Green, I, I know somebody that knows him pretty well, and he said, look, he was really nervous about playing in front of the home crowd for the first time. He said he really w- understands he's a new quarterback. He wants these get this, these fans to believe in him, and it got to him a little bit. Well, okay, hope he's got that out of his system. But the defense was just hard to believe uh, because they, got, they ran the ball on Arkansas, a team that the week before had just stuffed a really good running team let these guys just run right past them. I mean, there was a a play at midfield which would have stopped that drive, that first drive, and Brad Spence, a linebacker who weighs almost 240 pounds, just flat got knocked backwards by one of their running backs who just ran into him and ran harder. And we saw that sort of happen over and over again. They got better as the game went on, and they finally did get to the quarterback in terms of batting, getting it, uh, Landon Jackson got a hand on that pass, which if caught and the receiver was wide open, if that's caught, you get within three points. Who knows what happens at that point? They get an onside kick. So there were problems all the way through. I think it was a classic case of overlooking a team that had not played well the week before. You can, you can, you can say that's understandable. It happens in sports all the time. I think it happened to Georgia, but this team, doesn't have the luxury of doing that as you said this team they're trying to prove to everybody they're not last year's team and you don't do it by playing like that hey mike who who's going to be our our wide receiver our tight end who do you see being the second go-to option armstrong clearly uh you know is a guy that i feel like is going to play on sundays he's a matchup nightmare uh are do do you see us trying to get the ball to the tight ends a little bit who do you think can be our, our second option yeah, I absolutely think the tight ends. And I think I heard through the grapevine they were both pretty upset, that, you know, that uh, Has and and uh, Ty Washington felt like the ball needed to come to them more often. Now, we're getting into this thing that Clint Sterner's been talking about, guys, where he says that Taylor Green goes off script too much. He trusts his own ability to improvise more than he does the play that's called and he needs to be more disciplined. He's calling him for for him to be benched, and he's done that twice now, last week and this week. I, I'm not that radical on that. I understand what they're saying, and I do agree that he probably needs to stay on script more often. But when you've got his ability to do what he does, I don't think you want to take that completely out of the, out of the mix. I saw him too many times take a play that was busted, and it might have been his fault, it might not have been, but he made it work. And no better example than right there when they scored the last touchdown on the play before, he, he uh, tried to fake a handoff to DeQuindon Jackson and, and was lazy and pulling the ball out, and it got hit and hit the ground. It looked like it might kill the drive. He fell on the ball, but it looked like, oh, oh you're in problems. You may have to kick a field goal here. Instead, on the next play, there was a bad snap off to the left and low. He reached down and got that thing and peeled around to his left and scored a touchdown. Now, we've had a quarterback before, and I remember who he was, and I remember what was being said about him. Oh, he goes off script too much. He improvises too much. And everybody was always talking about how bad that was. My attitude was, if he makes it work, what are you talking about? And so I think we've got the same thing here. I'm not against being disciplined, but when you've got a guy with that ability to improvise, I've seen too many times, when players like that make a play happen when it wouldn't have happened if the play had been run as you were supposed to run it. So it's kind of a mixed bag there, but I'm not as down on him as some people are. Well, isn't the idea that 
when you have an athlete that's so dynamic, especially when she takes off running, uh, so if they go off script, that's a feature. That's not really a bug in the system here. <laughs> if he was slow-footed, it'd be a different story. But with, with that kind of speed and elusiveness, maybe, maybe you want him to go off script a little bit. Exactly. And, and, and what's being said is, well, that won't work in SEC games. Really? What well, worked against Oklahoma State? I think they could compete in the SEC. I don't think there's anything magical about the fact that you're playing in an SEC game. You still, if you've got the – look, you know one of the most impressive things he did when he threw what should have been a pick six? How many times do you see the quarterback make the tackle and prevent the pick six? He used his speed and his physical size to, to nail that guy. And most of the time, that's a touchdown. So – He's got abilities that an average quarterback does not have. And I just think you can get carried away trying to criticize this guy. I'm not saying he's above criticism. And I, I do think Bobby Petrino will continue to work with him and say, look, you, you looked right at this receiver. He was open. You didn't throw it to him. And then all of a sudden you're running around in the backfield trying to make something happen. You just made that play too complicated. Okay, I get that. <laughs> I'm still saying there's times – when improvising works better than the play that as it was called. And I, I want to go to the defensive end for a second, Mike. And, and I, I'm kind of shocked that Landon Jackson has zero sacks through three games. Although that last play, man, he has a, sometimes you don't get a stat for, for making the quarterback throw an interception, uh, but still zero sacks through three games. Do we have anybody uh, who can get to the quarterback? I don't know. I mean, that that's a big mystery because you would think, with this defensive coordinator, when he got here, we were told Travis Williams, that was a feature of him as a defensive coordinator. He he likes guys to go after the quarterback, and we're just not seeing it right now, and I don't know why we're not seeing it. Uh, the explanation was, well, they're double-teaming Landon Jackson. They're chipping him. Well, there has to be somebody else to make it happen. Where, where's your linebacker blitz? Sorry, he's got speed. Uh, you know, make it happen that way. But that is an issue because in the SEC, you have to stop the other team's passing game. And you cannot give them time to sit back there and look for receivers. You're putting too much pressure on your own secondary when you do that. I also think this, guys, Landon Jackson did step up after the game and say, look, we, in effect, he said, we overlooked these guys. He said, we made mistakes we don't normally make. We weren't physical enough. Okay, I I give you credit for saying that that's what happened. But when you had all those guys in green jerseys and so the practices didn't go that well, and when you had two guys out in the secondary, and when you had your defensive coordinator away from practice while his wife was having a baby, you are the one that has to step up, you and maybe a few others, and tell the rest of those guys, hey, suck it up. you got to do a better job. Uh, You know, I still remember that 2021 team. You had guys that were making things happen in the summer. Grant Morgan and Bumper Pool. We heard story after story about those guys refusing to let the other guys on the team let up. They pushed them and pushed them and pushed them. And you got to continue to do that. You got to have guys on the team that when you got an unusual situation this week, you're playing a team that got the crap beat out of them the week before. You you don't respect them maybe enough, and your practices are limited, and your defensive coordinator is gone. You got to step up and say, "Hey, there's no excuse. Let's go. Let's push ourselves." And so, and I think he's one of the guys that needs to do that. Is there any update on uh, Addison Nichols? Center went out with w- what looked like a left ankle injury. You could see the thing had already been taped up really heavily. And Amari Wiggins took over at center the rest of the way. There were no other changes on the line. But it, well, is there any update on Nichols? All Sam Pittman said was he's better today than he was, that there's been improvement there. And so what does that mean? We, you know, we don't know. Kudis is still out. You start, it's starting to look like he may be out for the rest of the year. Um, but that Addison Nichols thing is, is important. I'll tell you what else is important. It's something he, he it is a, one of the first things Pittman mentioned. He said, we don't want to play the same defense we played last year. Well, I don't think he's talking about scheme. I think he's talking about what they did. That was the most disappointing game of the entire 2023 season because that was a winnable game at home, and they gave up 48 points to Auburn. 
That should be a motivation this week. These, these guys embarrassed you last year. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? So we'll see. But that, to me, would be a major motivation point for the defense this week. What about uh, Clark? I, I'm a big fan of his. I think the secondary uh, always. I think the secondary plays better when he's on the field. Is is, is he healthy? No, they, Sam said he was doubtful. Mm. So I wouldn't expect him to play. Um, and look, he was one of two guys missing from you know uh, missing from that that game, and that's an issue maybe. But you got to do something. You, you know, Braxton I think will be back. But you got enough depth back there that these can't be excuses. I mean, I watched these guys in the preseason. I was amazed by all the backup people that were making plays. So, again, you got to you got to go after the quarterback. You got to harass him. You got to get some sacks. You got to make him throw off target. And then you got to hope your secondary holds up because they've got they switch quarterbacks against New Mexico State. They were struggling. Put a freshman in there, and he and he threw the ball better. So now, but you're going up against a freshman in his second game. So you know, disrupt the guy. Heck, you may end up facing freshmen the next three weeks, Mike. I mean, Auburn. You just mentioned it. A and M. They started a freshman um, in their in their last game, and he played really well in the victory over Florida. Marcel Reed, and then there's um, Iamaleva with Tennessee who may be the best freshman quarterback in the country. So you, I think they're going to be facing three freshman quarterbacks coming up. But these next two games, and I package it in with the UAB game, is I think it's the most important three-game stretch of the season. And it's not to, you know, overlook LSU, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss, or Texas, La Tech, and Mizzou. It's that this is where you can really start to build up some momentum before you return home again and play one of the – three or four teams that are coming into Fayetteville this year that may end up in the playoff. So you really want to be feeling incredibly confident and believe it, not just saying it, because you beat a and and you never beat a and especially in that building, and you beat Auburn after getting smoked by them last year. Like, these next two games, these are the games that will decide sort of like the rest of the season in a, in, in a sense. Absolutely, starting this week. You have to win this game. You got to figure out a way to do it. Then you got a little momentum for AM. You got to figure out a way to beat the Aggies. Then you're right. Then you've done something. You, you've done something you didn't do last year. And with uh, you still got some non conference games remaining. Uh, if you won these next two games, you'd have four wins with two more non conference games, which would give you six. You win another SEC game like Mississippi State, which they're beatable. Now you're up to – you could be 4-4 four and four in the SEC. That gets you seven wins. You could get eight. But you go to a bowl game, you might be like the 2011 team and win nine games. But you, it all starts this week. Well, let's leave it there, Mike. I always appreciate you coming on with us. Um, we'll do it again next week, probably about the same time. It seems one fifteen works fairly well. Yeah, seems good. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Mike Irwin, Pig Trail Nation. We appreciate his time each Monday on Halftime. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.